Yeah, all righty, working on the 420. I got this one sensor off, and here's the line. Has exhaust gases coming through it. It doesn't really look that plugged up, but I got. Oh, I closed the lid. Probably shut her down. Let's see. She comes back up. So I had my ET hooked in here, and uh, I did a test. Well, stopped working. We're gonna have to get back in here. Yeah, oh, it's got to grind here till that light goes out. Anyway, so I did an air motor test. It cycles the EGR, and uh, the exhaust valve, and the test came out that it was good, but we're still having a communications is issue between the ECM and I think product link. I'm not sure what to do there. Maybe calling my dealer, try to figure that one out. It's an ECM problem or there's a connection problem somewhere. And I just ain't smart enough yet to figure it out, I guess. We'll kick its ass. I always do. So we're working on a backhoe. What do you think, Matt? You like the engineering on this? No. So anyway, we we took the EGR motor out. The test said it was functioning, but the motor will turn, but the slide inside the EGR is stuck tighter than a bull's ass at fly time. So, we think that's our problem. Anyway, Matt's over trying to get out the Allen screws out of it. And probably should have taken the whole dang thing out, but that EGR pipe that goes over there, can't see it from here, goes up in it. Anyway, that's what he's, he's got three out. I'm probably the worst one to go to get out of here. So which one is it? That one back by the firewall that you got left now? Yeah. When I can turn all the way here. These are horrible machines to work on for room. Absolutely horrible. Anyway, Mike Cole's been helping us. We've been talking to him via Instagram. Anyway, you got these this is one mount, that's an EGR sensor there, and then these lines, and these are absolute horrible to get out, horrible. Always put anesthes back on these when you go in. And it decided it was going to snow. It's just coming down. This is not what the weather forecast called for. So Mike, the motor turns freely, but that, that thing there is stuck tighter than a bull's ass. So do I take this off? I don't know how you get that, get around there to get that pipe out of that thing to take the whole assembly off so I got the plastic deal off the back 
and I can make that valve move up and down. It goes in and out really stiff, but we can't break it loose from right there. Okay, Mike, is this acceptable? I mean, we can run it in and out now. We just wiggled it and sprayed Blake brake clean all over it, and uh, it operates freely. Is that gonna work? Oh, and the weather sucks too. It really sucks. Well, Matt's bolting it back together. He said, fuck it, we're putting it back together. So, we've got the EGR valve free to move. But Mike said, take this off. But there's no way on God's green earth you can get it off the EGR pipe. There's some kind of screw or bolt under there holding it. Lens is fogging up. Can't see nothing, I bet. It's a miserable day. Anyway, there's just no way to get down in there and get it out. Unless you wanted to pull the whole motor out. I don't know how it comes out. You know, I'd like I'd like to find the engineer that did this. And I'd like to just beat him. Stand here with a bullwhip. Say, here, you take that thing apart. You stupid son of a engineer it like that. I mean, that's retarded. At least if they'd have put a hole in there or something to get your hand in, you might be able to get it off. But this is absolutely miserable. So, I don't know if you took this whole mixer assembly off, whole intake manifold... Maybe you could get in there and get it. But this is just miserable. This is the worst thing. Out of all the things I've ever worked on Caterpillar, this has to be the dumbest mother thing in the world. Like Frank said, that's why he keeps his old back. How he ain't buying one of these electronic POSs. I, I'm here to tell you what. I told Matt, I said, you get this thing fixed... First thing you're doing is getting this son of a bitch deleted. This shit is gone. No more of this. This is nothing but a time waster and it just costs you money. That's bullshit. So after much struggle, I got the bolts out of this. But there's something holding that EGR pipe up in there. And I don't know what it is. Well, I can't. There's no way to get down under there and even work on it. So even if you took this whole mixer off, you couldn't get it off because that EGR pipe's hung up in there somehow. I can, I can kind of feel like maybe there's a screw down there, but there's no way in God's green earth to get that unless you want to pull the motor. I worked on that sucker till I couldn't feel my fingertips anymore. Matt went home to get some other tools. And when he came back, he got his fingers in there and that screw was loose that held that housing on to the intake plenum. And he screwed it out with his fingers after a while. And dropped the screw. I don't think we're putting it back in, but tip of the day that whole assembly is designed to come out as a unit the whole intake EGR assembly so I guess that's what we should have done is taken the whole thing out and we wouldn't have had so much damn trouble so we're going to take it home and clean it all up good hopefully tomorrow's a warmer day doubt it will be get it all back together hopefully this cures it so this is EGR on a 420 F with just passive regen and I can't get this valve out of the housing I got it to move a little but I'm gonna ruin it I'm probably gonna end up buying a new one six hundred dollars from my dealer Cat was so proud of this EGR valve, they had to hide their name on it, put it inside. <laughs> so you didn't know who made it. It's a cat product. 
It's a dandy. The ether injector quit working. Could I just pour more e ether in this hole and put that can back on there? Okay. That work? Go for it. All right, so we got everything hooked back up. Just finishing up. We're going to give her a test blow. Okay, Mike, you were correct. It's the EGR. He kept telling me it's screaming EGR. So we went through the test. It worked. It got rid of the code. We went from 126%. We're down to 106 at idle. Uh, the exhaust valve is closed. It's raised the temperature to 500 and climbing. It smell it. So it is passively regening. You're the smartest guy I ever met, Mike. I love you, man. Thanks for the help. So we got the 420 back together, cleaned the EGR valve. Um, ran, hooked DT up to it and ran the regen procedure. And it passed all its tests and poof, the high soot level warning was gone. I didn't even have to try to delete it. It just got rid of it. Um, it raised the exhaust gas temperature up to was like up to 515 it was still climbing you could smell it it was working anyway it went from 126 percent soot load down to 106 so it's working so the way these uh passive systems work is there's a valve on the outlet pipe of the turbo and it shuts and according to et it said it was at 80 percent and so what it does is when it regens, I noticed that the engine started making a lot more noise, knocking, like it advanced the timing or put more fuel to it anyway. And then that exhaust valve closes and that raises the temperature up and then it starts regen. And, and the reason it wouldn't work is the EGR valve was stuck and part of the problem with that is those EGR valves it's not really sealed where the motor goes in and so dust and dirt get in there and uh, I'm not I don't really think it was the soot because we just sprayed some brake cleaner on the shaft and I worked it back and forth and twisted it and then it just started moving so but we went ahead and took it clear off took it home cleaned it out got all the soot out it really wasn't that bad the tubes weren't really plugged up that come off of the valve and feed the sensors um, so all in all I think the dirt is what did it the death blow anyway we got it cleaned up put it on and then it would function and everything went back to normal so it is a pretty simple system it's just extremely hard to work on because in a backhoe they just It'd be really cool if they could have figured out how to move that engine forward about six inches. <laughs> Would have made old Jeff's life easier. But anyway, Jeff wins with a lot of help from Mike Cole. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the help, Mike. Um, I mean, I talked to him quite a bit on the phone through Instagram and then he was off work the other day and I was sending him videos and he was answering me. So he just kept telling me it was EGR, EGR. So I just quit questioning anything and took it off and uh, put my big boy panties on. <laughs> so thanks, Mike. Frank, I'm a backhoe man today. I'm gonna do some real difficult stuff. I'm gonna knock down them piles. I got piles to knock down. Sure good thing this backhoe's running so good. Ha <laughs> ha.